Thank you, Pam. Uh, and then also, thank you all for having me speak to you tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm, I'm excited for our topic tonight. For me, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'll give a little bit of background, just kind of set the stage before we hop in here. Uh, in addition, I want to make sure that this is kind of a, a dialogue, right? Like this isn't me just telling you how to do things. If, if there's something that's uh, exciting to you or you have some experience with, don't hesitate to toss it into the chat. I've got it up on this window over here. Uh, in addition, uh, always welcome to uh, chime in and give some encouragement to others as well too. So as you can see from this, uh, this first slide, uh, I'm a father of four. I have an amazing wife who supports me in all my crazy endeavors. And where this presentation actually started from is, uh, as you can see, the, the two littlest ones in there um, are twins. And I was holding them both in my arms. They were a few months old. And I got to thinking about all the craziness that's kind of been going on in our world. And unfortunately, what, what I was seeing is there's just a lot of grumpy people uh, online. And the, the way that people were communicating was at the time very disheartening for what I was seeing and just looking down at them and thinking about what, what are they going to grow up in and what's that going to look like? And so as I'm holding them, uh, my creative mind starts spinning. And what I started to think about was what, what is something that I can do in 30 minutes? Cause as you can see with the four kids and everything, don't have a lot of extra time. So how can I time box this and put 30 minutes towards making the world a better place? And so what came to be was this idea, this concept of, could I in 30 minutes come up with a name, come up with a website, come up with a way to host it, come up with the social channels, and then put that first message out there? And if I am going to, what is that message going to be about? How can I make an impact? And so at the time, what, what I came up with was um, a 30 day experiment to see what could happen if the sole focus was on cooperation and put it out there, created this thing within 30 minutes, had a, had a site, wasn't pretty, had a uh, way to be able to start collecting payments and then put that first message out there. And what happened was within about 30 days, I started getting people come to me and ask me questions for things. And then this really strange thing happened. Uh, this individual that I knew came to me and told me, hey, I'm not sure if you heard about this or not, but um, there were between 60 and 80,000 English as a second language teachers who just got laid off because they were teaching. And uh, I get excited about this. And it, this is part of the story where like, it also is, has been pretty powerful to see as well too. But they lost their jobs. And for anybody who's been through that, that's, that's a really crappy situation to be in. And immediately my heart went out to them and I asked, you know, what can we do? And my friend told me, you know, hey, if, if there's anything that you can teach them or better yet make for them to be able to kind of take back control over what they're doing. Um, these individuals were teaching English as a second language to Chinese students. The Chinese government shut down the three main uh, organizations that were providing that service. And so these 60 and 80,000 teachers were without an income source. Many of them, this was their primary path forward. And so uh, what, what I recognized was I can't build that many websites. I don't have that much capacity. Um, and to be honest, these individuals don't have uh, the funding right now to be able to pay for that anyway. So that's not gonna be a win-win for anybody. So what we decided was um, take those lessons learned from a few days prior where uh, I put that, that site together in 30 minutes and said, well, what if we actually taught people how to do this and used this as the way to help people take control back over their business, uh, own the platform and give them some security going forward. And the thing that was so incredible for me uh, and for them was being able to see them learn a skill that allows them to be able to build something that they own 
And then better yet was when they actually took that skill and they started to get their first checks coming in. And then from there, they were able to get uh, a couple of product bundles that they created being sold. And the, the most impactful for me was when I had somebody tell me that they were able to take care of their family's finances for that month. And I guess what I wanted to share with you is the, the exciting thing about all of this is it's fun to be able to take these things on and understand how to be able to do them. But what's most important is understanding your why. And the reason why it is so important is there's going to be times where there's going to be amazing success stories where those checks are coming in. And then there's going to be those really tough times where you're looking around and you're saying, man, is this really what I should be doing? And so understanding that why of why did you put that time and effort into it? Why did you go through the training? Why did you go through trying to understand these things is what you can fall back on in those trials to be able to then say, all right, I want to put this time and effort into it because, hey, I may not have figured this piece out, but I will. So I share that because that's my why for why I'm sharing this with all of you tonight. Um, and my hope is that even if it's just one of you who comes away with something that you can learn from what we're talking about, because I'll, I'll give you the why, I'll give you the, the, the what, and I'll give you the how. Um, I would love to hear the success stories that come from what, what you learn. Uh, and so with that, we're going to hop in. And as we go through this, feel free to ask any questions. But I'd like to open it up. Uh, what is a product or a service you are currently selling or hoping to? Uh, feel free to throw that in the chat. Going to make sure that there's nobody waiting in the waiting room. That's so cool. Beekeeping? Colleen is doing some writing. Annie's doing holistic healing. That's awesome. For those who are still waiting, to leap in and try and do something. I'd love to hear uh, what's holding you back from starting an online store. Oh, that's so cool. A running coach is in here as well too. Uh, try not to go off on a tangent, but that was something that I took up during COVID and uh, now I think I'm hooked. All right, don't know where to start. Don't know where to start. Lack of knowledge on selling. These are all great comments. And uh, they're honestly some of the most common things that I hear. So what happens is there are so many things that exist today as far as tools, as far as technology, as far as methodologies. There is an abundance of information that exists on the web of, hey, this is how you should start. This is what you should use. And oftentimes, they're pretty expensive or they're uh, a way to be able to upsell you into something else. What I wanna show you tonight is a way to be able to start an online store and start taking payments for under $100. And again, this is a methodology that I've taught to others and it, uh, it can be done in 30 minutes. Um, I will admit that the way that I teach it, it takes longer to do it because I end up talking too much. So I'm gonna try and be aware of the timing tonight as well too, just so that way we don't go long. I know everybody's got uh, things going on as well. All right, so I kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier, but here's some of the things that we're gonna talk about, all right? One of the biggest things is a name. You're gonna need some hosting. You're gonna need a site. Uh, you're gonna need to be able to take payments, of course. And then that social piece we'll talk about when we get there, all right? So this is where we're headed. And this is uh, getting into what we, what we need to accomplish. All right. So one of the hangups that I often see when people are trying to get started is I need to come up with a new name. I need to have this great, incredible, catchy thing that people will easily be able to remember, probably should spell it. And it becomes this long rabbit hole of time. All right. So my biggest thing in all of these, you're going to find some repeating things. Uh, keep it simple. Don't don't spend more time in it than you need to. So my, my favorite thing is I like to give myself an amount of time and kind of where the 30 minutes came from, right? 
Give yourself an amount of time to solve the problem. And if you can't solve it within that amount of time, where can you go for help? And oftentimes what you'll find is within that time frame that you give yourself, you'll find something that not only is good enough, it will help you to get started. So keep it simple. Next, make sure that it's available. So one of the ways that I go about doing that is I'll actually go out to GoDaddy. That's where most of my domain names are. Uh, so that's how I get started. And I will actually start searching the domain names that exist. So I'm just gonna throw that into the, the chat just that way you guys have the links as we're going through this. Um, one of my recommendations, number three here, is don't overpay. It's really easy to get emotionally attached to this wonderful name that you think should be used, but it's also a really expensive path because uh, as we look at this, one of the things that we need to remember is our objective here is not necessarily to have perfect and launch perfect. Our objective, really, when we come down to it, is to determine if we have a viable business. And the only way to determine if we have a viable business is to actually get paid for what we do. A lot of friends, a lot of family will tell you you have a great idea, but it's once you get that first check in the door that you have proof of a great idea. So as we go through this, remember, what we do is not put into stone. There are flexibility. There are things that we can do in the future to change days out and continue to move forward. Next. Once you secure your domain, and what I mean by that is actually purchase it, you can go and go out to the different social channels that you think you'll be using uh, or possibly could be using and make sure that you secure them. So uh, if you're going to be using Instagram so that way you can create a business uh, account on there, if you're going to have Facebook, if you're going to have Twitter, uh, if you're going to use YouTube or some other uh, framework, make sure that you grab those handles that match your domain. If they can't match your domain, just make sure that the social handles are as consistent as possible. All right, next. Where do I go for hosting? There, this is, this is one of those that you'll get a lot of different results based off of who's paying the most for the ad. But really, my, my three keys are find something that's easy to use. Find something that has incredible support, which this can be hard, and then don't overpay. My preferred one here is Flywheel. Flywheel is a, a local organization and uh, they recently got bought out. They are an incredible uh, startup success story of our local area. On top of that, where they really win and where they have had a phenomenal uh, business plan was they made customer service a key component of who they are. And so that support rings through in every issue that you have. There's always somebody who is smiling, even in the way that they do their uh, chats back and forth with you. You just feel the warmth. So highly recommend if you're gonna go down the path of having hosting, which we're talking about doing that right now, highly recommend Flywheel. All right, next. This piece here, there's a lot of different ways that you can go. Um, my recommendation for this is going to be, since we're talking about Flywheel, is WordPress. WordPress is a very powerful tool. It can be overcomplicated, but it can also be a very simple path forward. And so one of the things that I highly recommend is making sure that you have an easy builder. Um, what I mean by that is it gives you the flexibility to do whatever it is that you need, but it's also pretty straightforward on doing the simple things of maybe just changing some colors or moving something around on the page. Again, don't overpay. And then in addition, roll with a template if possible. So one of the templates that I have come to love is actually from Avada. And I'm gonna throw this in here uh, as well. So they've got quite a few different templates. I took a screen grab of it here. I'll show you one that I created uh, just a little bit ago, but so many different paths. And what you can do is you can actually take the pieces that they give you and implement and modify them slightly, all right? So again, using, using things that already exist to be able to test that the business is viable is really a key to success. All right, next is payments. I am a huge fan of Stripe in that it is simple to use. 
the dashboards are amazing and then it's got a lot of flexibility when it comes to the different types of products and services you can use you can set up something that is shippable like let's say a mug uh you could also do a one-time fee for something that is a digital asset so let's say like a class uh, and then you can also do something that's reoccurring or a subscription like let's say a community so those pieces, the nuance of how do you take payments for those different types of products has been really well thought out with Stripe. Now, I will say that there are things that are cheaper out there. So this is something that we want to keep on our list of possible areas to optimize in the future. You may decide, you know what, for what they give me, it's worth the fees, but this is a great way to be able to get set up and start rolling. Um, the other piece here is understanding your sales process. Now, this is an area where it could get complicated, but the simplicity of what Stripe allows is I can have somebody who comes in from my website, makes a purchase, and then with that, they can uh, receive whatever the, the good or service is based off of what I put out there. I can also do invoicing as well too. So let's say that I was doing some consulting. I can actually send a invoice to a specific customer, which allows me some flexibility in how I, how I take payments. All right, once we walk through those four steps, at this point in time, what we would have done is we created our, uh, our name, we created our hosting, we created a website, and now we're able to take payments. So really at this point, our opportunity is to be able to let people know that we're open for business. The easiest way to do that is wherever you have a following already, let them know. In addition, make sure you're tagging the new social accounts that you just set up. So that way you start building a following and start directing people to these new business uh, entities as well. All right, so that's a, a very quick rundown on how to get started. And here's what I wanna, wanna do for you. Um, I'm going to actually pause this for just a second. And I'm going to grab this how-to guide and I'm gonna switch over to something, all right? So this how-to guide, is the steps that I followed and just outlined here. So unfortunately in this conversation, there's not enough time for us to actually go through all the different steps on how to be able to create this. But what I have put together is a, a video series. It's about an hour and 10 minutes with just all the extra talking that's in there that will walk you through each of the steps to be able to begin creating your site, all right? Um, it walks through the name, process, it walks through setting up your flywheel hosting, it walks through choosing your uh, template and actually getting it configured on, uh, on flywheel, setting up your, your payments in Stripe, and then actually attaching them here as well too. So that form, if you're interested in the how-to guide, go out there and, and fill it out. Um, and I'll show you how I step-by-step step actually set up this site. So this year, um, all in, it probably took me about 30 minutes to be able to create this because I was using those tools that exist. And um, what, I, what I would like to ask is, don't actually go to this site and, and pay for the, the training. Um, I'm gonna give it to you guys for free. But what I wanna show you is this start now, I come out here, I can actually start taking the payment for the class. And as you can see, I typically uh, charge about $500 for this online course, but uh, the steps that, it, that you can follow actually start going through the process. And like I said, here's, here's a site that can start taking payment and has a few different call to actions. And then as you see down here, I even show you how to be able to set up the you know, a product that you can ship, a course, and then an example community as well too.
I just, I just want to know, this is Pam, and thank you, Derek, for that. I actually have went through that training. It really is very nice. It, it takes a step-by-step. Step. So like Derek's presentation, and he kind of told us like why he is, you know, kind of sharing his knowledge. What And then, and then he's kind of went through a very high level of the what, and this, this whole thing, if you, if you um, go grab that training that he's providing here, it'll show you step-by-step step on the how. He goes into the different links and goes in with, you know, and kind of shows you how to create that site. It's pretty cool. Thank you, Pam. I really appreciate that. Yeah. yeah I, like I said at the beginning, for me, it's, it's all about hearing those success stories. So uh, I wanted to find a way that could talk through high level of the what and what's involved, but yeah, that that detailed out how to actually accomplish it is included in the in that training. So I want to open it up. Want to start a, a little bit of a discussion here, but uh, if you have an online presence, what advice can you share? So for those who are thinking about it or who have done it, what are some of the things that you realized as you were getting started? or maybe you realized weren't such a big deal that maybe you made it out to be, um, just, to, just to kind of hear how things are going for everybody. Um, I'll share a little bit. My name is News and I have been, um, it's not a commercial venture on my own, but it was, uh, I'm on the board of several different nonprofits um, and so we're trying to generate, you know, engagement with our uh, user community, basically to attend events, certainly to donate, <laughs> and, which is, you know, always a concern. And um, but then also sometimes uh, just to build understanding of like who we are and what we do. Um, and um, so you talked about if you ha if you have a personal following. Um, then, you know, kind of tag your other business or in my case, like this nonprofit. Um, and what I found was it's just very hard to, to translate that, you know, let's say I have a Facebook post where a hundred people click like, it was very hard to translate those hundred likes to like also come to that nonprofit and, and also, you know, to generate that many likes. So um, I, um, and I feel like um, I, my, my personal brand maybe is associated with me and how do I kind of transfer that personal brand to a business or an online uh, or, a, or a nonprofit that was, um, that, that's been pretty hard to kind of generate that traction. Um, so that, that's kind of my first observation. Love to hear if anybody has thoughts or kind of success stories around that. Um, the second was in one particular case, um, which was the nonprofit had to do with kind of religious freedom and religious um, understanding. Um, and so we generated almost uh, the negative kind of, <laughs> of, so more of more of detractors, you know, people that would comment, you know, things that were um, uh, in some cases, frankly, illegal, we had to turn it over to the FBI, but that's a different issue, but just sort of, it was more, so we ended up uh, trying to delete or restrict those kind of comments. And so um, it's kind of some of the, some of my experiences so far. Yeah, what, what you are describing is probably part of that anxiety, at least I know I felt when I, put out that first post that was attaching myself to something new, right? It's that scary unknown of how are people gonna respond? And then when you start to think about it, the, especially in your case, I mean, that's, that's rough when you get that type of a response. And it's really easy then to say, man, I, I don't know if I wanna keep doing it. The, the commendable thing is, is you did and you kept moving forward. And the, the tough thing about building a brand is, it takes time and it takes a consistent cadence, right? So as you start to think about that story, as you start to think about that conversation of what, what do I want to, what do I want to say? How do I want it to be received? It, it often cannot be distilled down into 
a single moment online, right? Like when you think about people's attention spans anyway, if it's too long, they're gone, right? And then if it looks like it's an opportunity to enter into a debate, then that, that creates all sorts of chaos as well. So one of the things that I would highly recommend is there's a book called, uh, called Story Brand by Donald Miller. Say it again, Story yeah. Brand. Story Brand, so I'll write it in here. And so what the premise of this is that every person who comes to visit your site or comes to uh, interact with you, they are the hero in the story. And what they're looking for is a guide. All right. So it kind of changes the way that you talk to somebody. Right. So if I'm if I'm looking at, at you as the hero and uh, you're coming to my site, what I'm trying to do is understand the challenges that you face and provide a story that you can see yourself in and you see yourself as that hero. But really what you need is that guide to help you to get from where you stand today and where you need to get to tomorrow. And so when you start to think about it in terms of that and you think about the, the different medium in which you're trying to connect with different people, how do those stories relate to one another, start to play off of one another? And really one of the best things that you can do is start to put that story together in a, uh, a longer term view. So one of the challenges that I was faced with when I first started trying to create a presence was I would do it as it came to me and then it lacked consistency. Whereas if I put together a content calendar and I say, hey, before I, before I go too far down this, I've launched, I've made a, a little bit of a splash. Now let me pull back a little bit and rethink, what am I gonna say next week? What am I gonna say the following week? What does my cadence look like? How far out can I take this story until I need a new topic? And so by building out that calendar of my posts, it gives me the flexibility of not having to have that pressure for what am I going to say today? How is this all going to look? And it allows me to be a lot more proactive. And so that way when things come in, I can react as they go. The other thing I would suggest to you as well is um, create an objections spreadsheet. Uh, if I had a better place to store them, I, I would recommend that. But honestly, the spreadsheet has been something that uh, I've used with quite a few different companies and products that I've launched. And what we do is we have a category, we have the objection and the how we handle the objection. So that if something shows up online that uh, creates an emotional response, I'm not responding with emotion, I am responding with something that I have already curated to meet the need of whatever that could be. And so those, those categories, work best for however, however you're set up. Maybe it's a, um, you have a, a response for inflammatory, you have a response for uh, challenging questions. Like if I were to challenge you with, well, I don't think that's true or however you wanna do it. Those, those structures allow you to be able to, again, respond in a way where it's thought through and, and practiced. And it's something that you can share, right? So that's where you can get some scalability and allow others to also help you with uh, managing that content for a business. Mm. Very helpful, thank you. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think that um, for a uh, nonprofit where we had, for example, three different administrators of this um, online presence, we didn't necessarily, it, and everyone was doing it as a volunteer effort. It was not, it lacked the kind of organization that you're talking about, which is to, you know, think ahead to what your objections are going to be, think ahead to what your responses are, coordinate your responses with others so that they're familiar with what they are, you know, have an escalation a plan. And so you're talking about kind of being organized about it. Um, as well as um, uh, looking for uh, regular content that's not haphazard. It's not like, oh, it happens to be this 
holiday occasion. So now I'm going to bombard you with four different posts now, and then there's silence for four weeks. So I think um, uh, t probably what we experienced was typical in a nonprofit and you're suggesting like, you know, a little more kind of administration slash organization around it would go a long way. It, it helps. The other thing I would recommend, if there's three individuals, determine who owns it. Somebody has to be responsible for it and somebody has to own it and somebody has to lead it because otherwise it's really easy for three different people. And this is this has been my experience with startups. So what you're describing in a nonprofit directly correlates to whether it's a sole proprietor or a partnership or a uh, larger entity with multiple people. If, if it's not written down, it doesn't exist. And if it's not... Uh, if it doesn't have an owner, it won't get done. So I would highly recommend at least those two pieces of writing it down, talking about it. And plus then you can schedule that, that time to come together and say, Hey, we've got this calendar month blocked out. Let's spend two hours and let's, let's build out the next and let's spend some time brainstorming. I like it. I, um, I, my day job is in a corporate environment. Um, and, um, we're about to launch a uh, Dev DevSecOps um, transformation initiative that's been a year in the in the works, um, and uh, so it's kind of we're selling something <laughs> to our you know internal employees, and so I'm kind of thinking uh, it might be useful to to set up like an internal site and kind of treat it like that, like uh, all the things that you're saying as far as uh, being proactive about our communication maybe even being proactive about some of the objections that might come up. For sure. There's a, uh, uh, a new startup here in Omaha called Workshop. Um, and they are doing some really cool things around uh, internal emails. Uh, and actually, I think a couple of the founders were over at Flywheel as well too. So it might be worth checking them out and it might help you from an internal campaign standpoint. Thank you very much right. for your questions. Um, I noticed here, uh, one other one was, do you play with the cadence to, uh, hit the right balance? Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of, uh, KPIs that you can watch there. You can see what your interaction rates are like. Um, do they start to trail off? Um, and then that could just be a matter of, do you need to switch up the content topic or is it one of those where maybe you're posting too frequently, uh, or not frequently enough? So that's another another good thing to play with, but yeah, but there's so much data that's out there. Uh, it's just a matter of taking a look and, and starting to see, you know, what are those trends, track them. Uh, spreadsheets are amazing for those. How do, you, how do you deal with the, um, and this doesn't just go for online, but anything in general, the fear of success. You know, sometimes people are hesitant to do something because it's going to be so wonderful and there's going to be a lot of people that want whatever it is that you're selling but you only wanted to invest X amount of time into it. And now all of a sudden it has just blown up and, and it's consuming. So how do you raise your prices? <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, that's a good answer. <laughs> Jimmy, I like that. <laughs> I guess I would ask a question. Has this happened yet? Um, not personally to me, but, but I have a feeling that a friend of mine has uh, somebody that's just launched something that's going to be really big. And uh, so just, just asking for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, Derek, I'd also say that the fear of the unknown stops people from the other side of the coin as well. Right. You know, I, I, I sell online products, if you would. And I would say that one of the biggest stumbling blocks for people getting into what I do is that there's one piece that people just don't understand and they fear it. So they don't do it. So I, and what I've told people in the past is take little steps, right? You don't have to go all in all the time, but take little steps, be persistent and build it the way that you want to build it. So. Absolutely. I didn't mean to steal your thunder there. No, no that, that, that's great. That's great advice. The, the way that I've, learned over the years. So there's two parts, right? There's, uh, Colleen, you, you mentioned the, the fear of success. Uh, sometimes I see that with people who don't have any success yet. And so that's a, a preventer for them. Uh, the successful, I have a good friend of mine who says it this way. It's never as big as you think it will be. And it's never as small as you think it will be. 
It's usually somewhere in the middle. And so it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, to Jimmy's point, it's, it's that process of continuing to grow, continuing to learn, continuing to fail, continuing to do it all over again and keep chipping away at it. it it's, you know, people talk about uh, it being a consulting practice or a uh, law practice or however you want to describe the practice. It's the learning to hone those skills over time that you'll start to see things happen faster and faster. And so typically that success, you already have a pretty strong foundation because you've gone through those failures, you've gone through those trials and you can, you can get past it. The other thing is if it happens and you start to feel it, one of the best questions you can ask yourself is what am I avoiding? And then make the commitment to go and attack the thing that you're avoiding first thing. Uh, I'm not sure if you heard the term, uh, uh, eat the frog. So eat the frog first, right? So just get, mm -hmm. get the thing over with at the beginning of the day, attack the thing that's, that's holding you back. And biggest thing is, is just being aware of what it is that you're avoiding typically helps a lot in that scenario. And raise your price. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that, that'll help. <laughs> That's awesome. Any other questions? I have one that I put into the um, chat, but I'll say it. I, I'd like you to say just a little bit more about a uh, personal versus business Facebook page and what and when to post um, just like um, news said, is that how you say your name? <laughs> um, okay. Um, I find that I have so much more um, uh, engagement with my personal page and not very much with my business. And I'm having a hard time knowing when to take my business and post to my personal. I try to like mix it up and, and put some fun things about my family. So it's not always like, you know, I don't want to push business too much on my friends, but I also have a lot of people who are, you know, Facebook friends with me because they're interested in my business. So can you say what, what, what thoughts you have on that? For sure. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. And I will caveat this with like, this is not my area of expertise. I know what kind of works. And so there's people who know this far better than I do. Um, and we've got a few of them on our team here too. So they might be good to connect with as well. Good, but my recommendation would be when you, when you look at the, the separation and even just that content, right? People, people interact with the things that they find meaning with. And so you as a person, you've got these friends, you've got these individuals who like who you are and like to read what you have. So putting that out there is still getting your face in front of them. And so having something every so often, let's say a one to seven ratio, or maybe it's a one to 12 ratio of personal to business related, it still allows you that avenue to be able to put that business post in there. The thing that I would recommend is making sure that you keep that part of who you are and present the business in that light too, just so that way it still has that personal touch of what you're trying to do and how it's meaningful to you and to your clients as well. So keep that personal touch if you're going to start to introduce uh, business with personal. Just thinking about the avenues and the audience of how, how people come to be and, and where they exist and how you're talking to them and what they expect from that specific persona. Okay, thank you. Yeah, hopefully that helps. All right. Uh, so I'll round this out really quick. And so what we talked about tonight is this startup area, right? So quick recap. We talked through the goal being, how do we get to revenue? Once you get to that point, there are so many cool opportunities because now you've got the opportunity for growth. Your team might grow, your business will grow. You're gonna to wanna to start to implement. And really that's where Mango Mammoth, so just kind of explaining how we fit into all of this. We exist because we get really excited about that growth area. And what we love to do is help uh, digital commerce become high performance. 
So our focus is really on when you have that business and when you get to that point of, I'm excited about where it's headed. I'm excited about what we can try and accomplish. How do we take it to that next level? That's where we start to put in some of those high-performance uh, strategies and technologies to be able to be successful. I really appreciate all of your time tonight. Uh, I know that we've got a couple of things uh, for you as well, too, so I'm going to hand it over to Pam. But absolutely, if there's any more questions, I'm happy to, to answer any of them. And thank you again for allowing me this opportunity to, to connect with you all.